Greetings. This is TK Trav, aka Travis Magus, here with OVX 777. Today I'll be reading The Magician, A Study in Effective Magic by Philip Cooper. Ashe to the Order of the Unicorn, Ashe to the Order of the Phoenix. Chapter 1 Magic is the Ultimate Science. This book is about magic, true magic. It will help you understand the subject, work out your own rituals, and use magic as it is meant to be used, as an aid to a better life and an understanding of that life. Contemporary study of magical subjects confuses novices and practitioners alike because it contains a number of outmoded rules and superstitions that do nothing for the art and science of magic. This book has been written to help restore magic to its rightful place in our creative cycle. True magic is not complicated. Magic belongs to anyone who wishes to use it. True magic comes from within the individual, not from some initiate or secret society. After all, who initiated the first initiate? Magic is a highly individual and personal creative process, and to be effective, each individual must formulate his or her own inner temple, contact his or her own power source, and work magic in his or her own way. The basic rules and laws are the same for everyone, and these will now be given to you. From then on, it is up to you. Let us start by defining just what magic is and what it is not. Magic is not dressing up in brightly colored robes, chanting strange incantations, or collecting grades and titles. This may flatter the ego and be of limited use in some cases, but it is not magic. Pathworking and meditation are not magic. They are tools, aids. So what is magic? Magic, true magic, is the art of using controlled thought to produce a result. If you doubt this, then ask yourself, why are you interested in magic? Or why do you involve yourself with it? Perhaps you feel it is right for you. It is, but maybe not in the way that you previously thought. Before starting any magical work, we need to look at how magic works in the light of reason. All thought produces results. By thought, I mean deliberate thought activated by the will, not daydreaming or normal conscious thought, which is analytical, critical, and makes comparisons for evaluation. Willed thought produces results, physical results, and thought uses power to create. In normal life, we are generally unaware of this process, yet it happens all the time as we create around us all that we desire or do not desire. Magic is the art of knowing how to use this creation process to produce results that are desirable. Before going on any further, we will take a careful look at the mental process used in creative magical thinking. There are three areas of the mind which concern us, the conscious, the subconscious, and the will. The subconscious mind is the powerhouse. It creates around us all that it believes to be true, according to the instructions we give it. Everything around you here and now has been created for you by your subconscious mind and has been attracted to you like a magnet. It is impossible to stop this creation process. Even when you leave earth life, it will carry on creating for you and serving you. For that is its purpose, to attract to you all that you need. It does not reason. It just accepts instructions that are believed to be in your best interest. Before it will change its creative pattern, it has to be convinced that the new instruction is valid. This is where the will and the conscious mind come into the picture. The will has to get past the barriers of the conscious mind. No matter how strong the will is to change something, it has to convince the conscious mind before that new instruction can reach the subconscious mind. The conscious mind only sees facts in the light of present subconscious creative patterns, which is why some people are unable to see a fact glaring at them. It is contrary to their deep beliefs. When you were very young and the critical faculties were wide open, your subconscious mind was trying to establish what your will wished. Most children are presented with facts that are accepted without question. These facts are totally believed, and so for you, they become true. Some of these facts were probably true. Some of them were probably untrue. Nevertheless, they were all accepted. The subconscious mind will seek to reinforce the conscious mind when a new direction is given to it, and so the whole process becomes a circle. The more the will is exercised, the more the conscious mind looks for facts to substantiate its previous beliefs. 
so new results are impossible, or at best extremely slow, for constant expression of the will eventually gets some reaction from the subconscious mind, even if it takes a lifetime. How do we cause a new creative pattern? Why bother? And what has this to do with magic? Quite simply, the subconscious mind is there to create for you whatever you wish. It knows no limits and is neither good nor bad. It just is. Give it an instruction and it will carry it out to the letter. Surely this is worth bothering with. There are many ways of getting through false beliefs to the creative mind, and magic is the best way for some of us. True magic, free from superstition and false ideas, gets results. And that is the purpose of this book, to show you how to do this. So how do you get the subconscious mind to respond to your will, whatever that may be? By simply using two facts and combining these with positive thought. They are, one, suspension of the critical conscious mind, and two, belief. The idea of combining positive thought with the suspension of the critical conscious mind and belief is used in meditation and self-hypnosis and yields results of a, of a fashion. But by far the best way is to use controlled imagination or visualization. Anything visualized and believed will actualize physically, and the more potent the visualization, the better the result. Magic uses a special imaginary language called symbology. Symbols are geometric patterns of power that the subconscious mind understands that combine with other visual imagery that enhances the effect, as you will see later. Magic without this inner working is merely superstition and theatricals, and those of you who find you have trouble with this should remember that clear pictures are not necessary, just know that the image is there. The more relaxed you are, the easier it is to visualize. So bear this in mind, tension is the enemy of ritual. Any magical symbol is there to be used, not prayed to. It is there to be used and understood. Does anyone really understand the pentagram? Or has it been accepted because someone else accepted it, who in turn thought it would be a good idea to work it into lodge rituals? After all, it is traditional. Or is it? In this system, we will use the symbol from which all the others are derived, the encircled cross, sometimes known as the Kabbalistic cross. We will work with it in a way that leads to an understanding of the symbol. We will work in a way that produces results. Now let us look at beliefs. Belief and magic are inseparable. Magic cannot work without belief, and belief is the simplest form of magic. There are, of course, different types of belief. On the one hand, there is blind belief in something, usually without reason. Superstition is an example of blind belief, and superstition has no place in magic. True belief is another matter. It is sane, logical, will stand up to any test, and can be proven to the person who has it. True belief comes from faith in true facts and cosmic laws and usually needs a lot of self-searching to obtain. The best way to get to truth is to ask why until you get there. Never accept someone else's line of thinking until you get to the truth by asking why. Then, when you know why, you can accept and believe or reject and disbelieve. Remember that disbelief is also a form of belief and it can cause the subconscious to actualize. All beliefs actualize. This is why superstitions work, because for some, they are believable even if to others they may appear silly. To change blindly accepted beliefs requires the constant use of the will, the critical faculties, and the question why. We need to explore our subconscious beliefs because if we do not, we probably will have a lot of confusion within that may keep us from moving ahead, or keep us from being able to work with magic. For example, 200 years ago, a magician passed on information to a neophyte, etc. With the magical information also came personal modifications, superstitions, and misunderstandings. 200 years later, the line of power is still valid or the same, but by now it carries seven, several, general, generations of personalized thinking as well. So now, new initiates are in danger of accepting quite a lot of rubbish. Another thing to watch out for is the fact that students of esoteric subjects love to join secret societies. If you come up against lines and contacts from the past, secret chiefs and spirit guides, and truths that may never be revealed, then perhaps it would be wise to give the secret society a wide berth, or you could become as they are, with the blind leading the blind. Positive beliefs produce positive actions and results. If you believe something, it will come true. 
since belief will activate the will in a positive way, which will then bypass the unbelieving conscious mind. The reverse is also true. The will can be exercised to change old beliefs for better ones, for better results, for a better life. Magic presents symbols via the imagination to the subconscious mind in believable form. It is important to use the right symbols in the right way with the right beliefs, free from superstition. Unfortunately, people built many undesirable qualities into visual imagery. By all means, have a rain god if it will produce rain when most people need it. As superstition crept in, however, it became necessary to appease the gods, even with ritual sacrifice. The image or symbol ended up being misunderstood, and we have had trouble with it ever since. There can be no excuse for bowing and scraping to an image that was, after all, created by humans in the first place. So let us keep the old gods and the new ones in perspective. They still have a use, but we must let common sense prevail. Magic is a noble art and an exact science, and it works because it is a science, as well as being your divine right. Each and every using power all the time. As students of magic, we become aware of this power and use it as we will. The most heated debates that concern the use of magic involve discussion of black and white magic. It is worthwhile to explore power as it relates to black and white magic so you can understand how to use power correctly. We were created to create whatever we will, using power and exercising our right of free choice. What we create in our minds will actualize once the subconscious powerhouse accepts the idea. We are responsible for all our creative actions in the same way that we are responsible for the ripples on the surface of a pool into which we have just dropped a pebble. God, and by God I mean the ultimate creative entity, does not approve or disapprove. Any action we take is our choice and we must live with it. This is the real idea of karma. We are responsible for whatever we do. This is not a divine threat. It is common sense. It does not mean we have to be holy and saint-like and suffer all kinds of penalties if we make a mistake. As we sow, so shall we reap. So it makes sense to sow the things we want to try not to affect others adversely. Power is neither positive nor negative, good nor bad, nor any other division we can think of. It just is, and it is abundant and given freely, so that we may create freely, and hopefully with wisdom. It does not help those who are deemed to be good. It does not put down those who are deemed to be bad. There is no such thing as good and evil. It is all a question of attitude toward any given situation. What is good for one person may be totally bad for another. We have been conditioned to think that certain things are good and others bad, but are they really so? Perhaps it is a case of accepting lines from the past again. Each one of us must decide what is good and bad for us, and then use our power center to achieve that end. It is one thing to make a mistake. It is quite something else to knowingly do something you consider bad or evil. Like attracts like. Every cause has an effect. If you sow what you know to be evil, then you will reap evil. And for some, that is just what they want, strange as it may seem. So-called black magicians come under three main headings. 1. Those who get a sort of thrill from being nasty to others, usually the church, the establishment, or anyone else who happens to disagree with them. 2. Those who indulge in sex and violence. 3. Those who supposedly misuse their magical powers for material reasons. The first type of black magician needs some sort of extroverted behavior to enhance his or her feelings of hatred for others. This is not magic. It is an overinflated persecution complex mixed with amateur theatricals. The second type contains healthy, oversexed people who need something other than the usual bizarre sexual acts, and they think the mysterious world of magic supplies the extra ingredient. The third type, the materialist, is sometimes despised more by the so-called white magicians who consider that power and magic should only be used to evolve. Now, before you make a decision, just think about this evolvement business. Does it really seem conceivable that the supreme creative all-knowing force would create something as imperfect as humankind and then throw us out of heaven, leaving around clues so that we may climb back up the mythical ladder to our source? God must have made a mistake in our creation, or at least overlooked something along the way. It may be that some people consider that God did, in fact, make a mistake, but I think that those who believe this are not dealing with God, but with their own idea of God. God, 
the God, cannot make mistakes. God is absolutely and utterly perfect in every way and cannot in any way be wrong, unjust, ill-feeling, and so on. Anything less than perfect cannot be God. So where does this leave us? The idea of evolving is an old one, and like so many old ideas, it is wrong. We were created perfect and still are. It is just that we do not know this. We have forgotten it and substituted some rather strange ideas instead. The fall came when we became curious about the things that would harm ourselves and others. Because of free choice and power, we got ourselves into a mess and lost track of reality. We were given the entire physical universe as a paradise to live in, given power to create physical things and given free choice, yet we somehow managed to turn this into a hell, all by ourselves. Yes, we must each evolve not up a ladder, but rather back to the knowledge that Earth is supposed to be a paradise, and to the wisdom of correct thinking and a spirit of love and oneness. It could be argued that the fall was to learn magic and the mechanism of creation, but can you see the folly of this? We sit around having everything and being bored senseless because everything has been provided. We all need adventure and excitement, and we have been given the power to create art, music, and science. We can explore the unknown. There are many outlets for this energy. The material aspects of life are important, and although it may seem fashionable, it's fashionable to take a vow of poverty to evolve, do not get the material side of life in perspective. No god put all this material potential here just to tempt us. That would be sadistic. Why tempt your own prime creation? Material aspects do have their problems. The real materialists are the ones who suffer from greed. To them, the material is a constant source of living in hell, and all because of the wrong attitude. Possessions and comforts are neither good nor evil. It is sometimes our attitude that is wrong. Self-denial without some solid reason or incentive is just as bad as greed. For instance, it is stupid to fast just because religious dogma insists. It is, however, a good idea to fast for a reason, like enhancing the awareness or cleaning the body. The idea that you may do something for someone else, but not for yourself, is wrong. Very wrong. There is no reason for this other than perhaps superstition. If you tell yourself often enough, you will believe it, and if you believe it, it will come true. If you are at present hard up, confused, searching for something, trying to evolve, or coping with life's endless problems, then remember that all this is happening because you are causing it to happen. As far as your subconscious mind is concerned, this is what you really want. Most of these wants were pushed into your subconscious before you were old enough to resist. But nevertheless, they are there. So why not exchange them for things you really do want? Throw away dogma and superstition, and wrong thinking. Ask why, why, and why again. Evolve to the knowledge of you and your needs using creative magical power to this end. The end product of magic is physical, not imaginary. A magical act without a physical result is not magic. Meditation and pathworking will provide you with information, not as a gift from the inner guardians of the gods, but because you are entitled to it. When you get information, use it for yourself and others, but use it all the same. The system of magic that I am going to reveal will show you how to manipulate all aspects of your life according to your needs, and it will assist you in evolving to the knowledge of your real self. It will help you become yourself in your own way, as an individual linked to the whole, separate yet belonging, responsible for your own actions using your own free will. The basics given to you, if you wish, lead on to other systems, be they Orphic or Hermetic, Naturalistic or Kabbalistic. You are not being restricted in any way, nor are you accepting previous dogma. Now, here are two important things that I want you to do. I want you to set aside all that you know about magic, then question every idea, one by one, to see if it is indeed true. Second, I want you to take all your books on magic and put them away, just for a short while. If you have a temple, clear everything out. I cannot do that, I hear you say. Why not? Stop and think, why not? That single word, why, is probably the only real wor word of power in existence. You will come to know it and use it in a powerful way. I have asked you to do something, and I will also give you reasons, but I want you to discover something far more valuable than my words or your reactions. In a moment, I would like you to stop reading and take a pen and paper. Think, and then write down your thoughts. First, 
What kind of reaction did you have to this idea? Was it positive? Maybe later on? Or negative? This is not a trick question. I'm genuinely trying to point you toward the truth about yourself, your real self. Do this now. Let us expand a little. Again, I want you to stop reading shortly and write down your thoughts. If the answer was yes, why did you agree to this? Was it because you really thought this was a good idea, or did you say yes for some other reason? Think about this, and then write it down. If your answer was maybe later on, ask yourself, what are you trying to protect? Define exactly when later on is. If your answer was no, then give your reasons. Perhaps you do not like someone else telling you what to do, or are you also being protective? Really think about this. Do this now. Now let us continue. In front of you is a whole world of information about yourself if you could just see it. For a start, you will fall into one of three categories. Receptive, evasive, or assertive. If you are receptive, you probably do things for other people at your own expense, and you probably accept ideas from other people without thinking. You must learn to be more assertive and question. If you are evasive, you have a great deal of difficulty making decisions, and you must learn to be more decisive. If you are assertive, the chances are you are being overprotective. What is it you are protecting? It could well be that you are protecting parts of yourself that are of no use to you. A very important statement was once inscribed at the Delphic Oracle, Know thyself. It is valuable for you to discover why you are as you are at this point in time. You are probably not tr being truly yourself. In reality, you will probably become a blend of all three of these categories, but in a much higher form, and with a predominance of one of them. Before continuing, excuse me, before coming to a definite decision about this clearance that I have suggested, I want you to explore a few more concepts about the subject, no matter which category you think you belong to. Before magic can work, your study or knowledge of the subject has to be firm and correct, just as the foundation of a house is vital to its entire structure. What sort of foundations should we have? One that is true. Step one is often the most difficult because it involves letting go. By giving up everything like this, you detach yourself and are then able to look at the concept of magic away, objectively from a distance. This sets up another reaction called desire, and desire power is what magic is all about. Those who teach that desire is wrong are supreme fools. Desire is like a magnet. It pulls things toward you, both good and bad. When you're detached like this, you're in a unique position to look at your desires so you can decide which are of value and which are true. Really and truly, you're actually not giving up anything. You are becoming selective. You are exercising choice. You are deciding and you are in control. Now can you see why I asked you to set aside those things that are dear to you? It was done so you could gain even more, only this time you gain things that are right for you rather than acquiring useless items and thoughts that inevitably block your progress. You must learn to let go. Think of this as a mathematical equation. Letting go equals gain. To give is to gain. It is scientific magic, and it works. The more you cling to things, the more you, in fact, lose. By giving, I do not mean squandering or losing out by being overgenerous and foolhardy. I mean applied cosmic fact. Give and gain, that is the law. As a final point, you are about to plant a seed, a magical seed. In real life, you would not dream of planting this in a bed of weeds. Why do this magically? Clear the ground and start from scratch. I promise you that you will not lose anything, but you will gain more than you may realize now. Getting your personal base cleared of unnecessary restrictions allows you to look for real magic. The process is not as difficult as you think as long as you keep your goal in sight, and that goal is your true, magical potential. Life is not trying to deny you this success. You always get exactly what you want. The problem up to now has been that you probably don't know what you really wanted, so you got something else. 
Before looking for this magical potential, it would be a good idea if we define just what this magical potential is. You are looking for your true potential. In other words, you are looking for a system of magic that works every time and brings you personal happiness, success, and fulfillment. Nothing less. So please, do not compromise by setting your sights lower. Let us take this further by defining exactly what magic really is. In a moment, I want you to write down your definition of magic. Give your own definition. Again, this is not a trick question. I want you to clear away any false ideas and replace these with the right ones. Do this now. Right. Let us compare notes. If you have written any of the stock phrases on your list, such as magic is the art of cause and changes and so forth, you are not giving your ideas but somebody else's. Do try again. It is your views, your views that are important. Now, what have you got that is really yours? Let us see how near you are to the truth. Magic is the science of using and understanding the power of the subconscious mind to achieve a desired result, a physical result. Time and time again, we will return to the simple yet powerful statement, and you will see how true this really is. Quite often, the physical end of magic is forgotten. It is of little use to spend a lot of time each day in a profound state of meditation, and then fill up your notebooks with astral experiences and interesting information if you do not use it. Meditate by all means, but meditate for a purpose and an end product. With all real magic, there has to be a result. Crowded notebooks may well flatter the ego, but they do not solve problems. They create them. The word create is vitally important in magic. The whole idea is to create using power. Directing power by using the mind in a creative manner is really magic. Anything else is pseudo-magic. Creation itself creates. So do we, usually without knowing it. To become proficient at magic means that you do know what you are creating. You decide, you exercise choice, you apply power. At the end of the operation, you expect a result, not another entry in your notebook. If you invoke for a Mercedes-Benz 260E, a Mercedes-Benz 260E should appear. Not a bicycle or some other car, but a Mercedes-Benz 260E. Anything less means that there is something wrong with your technique. Magic is not totally about spirituality. It is about material facts and to think otherwise is sheer folly. As I have said, if you invoke for a Mercedes-Benz 260E, then one must appear. What I mean is that a magical act must have a physical result. Anything other than this can only be classified as failure. Magic is really and truly about getting results. Nothing else will do. Naturally, there are cries of materialist or black magician and so on. Let me put the record straight once and for all. There is no such thing as black and white magic. First, there is energy, which is never-ending, abundant, and given freely. It is neither positive nor negative. Second, there is you. You have the right to use this energy. Third, there is free choice in the way in which you choose to use this energy. Use it destructively, negatively, or constructively, positively. Both get results. Energy conforms to patterns, and the understanding and use of these patterns is called magic. It is the intention which matters. If you knowingly use energy for destructive ends, you will use the same energy as you will if you use it for constructive ends. Destruction could be called black, and construction could be called white. But even this is not accurate. What is right for one person may not be right for another. It is your choice, and you must make it. Forget all about the black and white, good and evil, and so on. Think about choice and intention, and let these be your guide. Do be patient and let the ideas in this book guide you to what is right for you. Magic is made in the mind, mainly by using imagination. Do not confuse visualization with imagination. If you can see pictures in your mind clearly, this is well and good. Imagination is easy. We can all do it as you will see. You've probably heard of the subconscious mind and the way this can be influenced through hypnosis and so on. 
to achieve results that were impossible under normal circumstances. The subconscious mind knows no limits and can achieve anything you wish. The problem is in getting it to do these things. Magic is the safest way to use this power, and imagination is one of the keys that unlocks the door to this limitless power. Read this chapter over and over again. Question and ask why. The doorway to your real magical potential is now open, and the magical process for you has begun.